we'll go ahead and begin this question by first analyzing some of the diagrams that they give us. We'll first start off by analyzing the diagram that does not contain any water, so there's no refraction going on here. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it into something that we would see in a Snell's Law problem. What I've gone ahead and done here is I erase this eyeball so that I can go ahead and make a triangle up here. So if I extending the lines here and here, I can almost duplicate this triangle right here. Now why is that important? Take a look at this second diagram right here where there's some refraction going on. Now that we have water, we have a new medium that light passes through. So the ray will get bent. But take a look here. This triangle is the same triangle right here. The reason is because it's the light is passing through the same medium, which is air, and the angles are the same. So it'll have a height of H, and it'll have a distance of D, or a width of D. Over here in this triangle down below, we can go ahead and find that the height is H, and the distance here is simply going to be half of the distance right here. The next thing we're going to need to do is to find the hypotenuse of each triangle that we've drawn. So the hypotenuse for this upper triangle will be the square root of d squared plus h squared. Hypotenuse for the smaller triangle will be d over 2 squared plus h squared. Next, we're going to perform Snell's law on this diagram right here. We know that the index of refraction for the first medium is simply 1. The first medium being air has an index of refraction of 1. Sine theta 1, so sine of this angle. Recall that the sine of any angle is simply the opposite of the angle divided by the hypotenuse. So in this case, the opposite is this d variable right here. And the hypotenuse is the square root of d squared plus h squared. We're going to go ahead and leave the second index of refraction in its variable form, but we're going to, to take the sine of theta 2, and the sine of theta 2 is simply d over 2 divided by the square root of d over 2 squared plus h squared. The next thing we have to do in order to prove the equation that question A is asking, we'll have to go ahead and perform some algebra here. Now, this may be easy for some, but sometimes it could be a little tricky. This is one way we could go about proving that equation. We'll go ahead and relabel this n2 and just call it n. So we'll cross multiply both sides so that we get d times the square root of d over 2 squared plus h squared is equal to n times the square root of d squared plus h squared times d over 2. Next, we'll go ahead and take the square on both sides so that we get d squared times d squared over 4 plus h squared, which is equal to n squared times d squared plus h squared times d squared over 4. What we can go ahead and do now is cancel those d squares, and at the same time, we'll multiply everything by 4. This will get rid of the 4 in those denominators right there, leaving us with less fractions to deal with, which gives us d squared plus 4h squared is equal to n squared times d squared plus h squared. What we'll go ahead and do is expand on the right side so that we get this form. What we're going to do now is we're going to move over some of the terms so that we can go ahead and factor out the h squares and the d squares. This will give us h over d is equal to the square root of n squared minus 1 divided by 4 minus n squared. So we've gone ahead and successfully proven the equation that part A was asking for. Part B wants us to use the same equation that we just proved and go ahead and solve for the height. When we plug in the numbers here where the index of refraction we're interested in is the one for water, which is 1.333. And we'll go ahead and plug in all the variables and we'll get a height of 0.0473 meters or 4.73 centimeters. 